My name is Michael, I'm a criminologist from Australia. Uh, and so I do a lot of research, uh, research with young people, um, talking to them about um, like sex and privacy and technology and things like that. Um, and when, when we're speaking to young women and girls, there's a couple of things that come up around personal boundaries and particularly when we're talking to young women about like their first relationships um, and especially for young women who are, who are in relationships with, with um, young men. Um, one of the things for adult women, when you ask adult women about their first sexual experience, the majority of adult women will say that their first sexual experience was not at a time and a place of their choosing. Um, so for, for, some, for some women, their first sexual experience was sexual assault um, or child sexual abuse. But for a lot of women, it's pretty normal for them to say, well, actually, I was pressured into doing something that when I look back on it, I, w I wish I'd said no. You know, it might not necessarily even have been criminal, right? It might not have been violent, but if I'd had a choice, if I felt like I'd had a choice, that's not what would have happened. That wouldn't have been my first sexual experience. And so it raises some questions for us about, well, you know, how can, um, you know, young women and girls, you know, make the kinds of decisions, the kinds of healthy decisions, empowering decisions around their sexuality and around the direction that they want their sexuality to go in. Because our sexuality, it is ours. <laughs> it is ours. It's nobody else's. That's a dynamic where actually it's pretty easy for things to happen that you don't want to happen because it's hard to say no. You feel like you have to say yes. And if you say no, or if you say what you want, then that kind of interrupts the relationship and maybe he won't stick around or maybe he'll go somewhere else. Um, so that's a really common theme that we hear from, from, um, from young, uh, young women and girls around their sexuality is that is that their male partner is in control. Um, and also, when things happen that are harmful, that hurt, that are wrong, where young women feel uncomfortable, they're often really reluctant to say, that was wrong. Not, oh, maybe he misunderstood. Maybe he made a mistake. Maybe I miscommunicated. Maybe I led him on. We hear that all the time from teenage girls, all the time. It's really rare that young women will admit actually what happened that I didn't like, that made me upset and maybe uncomfortable. It was not my fault. You know, it was his fault. He is at fault for what he did to me. We all have a sexuality and we all have to draw a line in the sand where we say that is not okay, right? That is not okay. Like my sexuality is my own. It is for me. It is not for anyone else. It's something I might share with someone else, but it's not for anyone else. It's nothing that someone can take away from me. And if they try to, they have harmed me and they are responsible for that. So I think it's two things that's really useful for young women to sort of bear in mind is really feeling comfortable about owning their sexuality. It's not something that they trade for a relationship. It's something that we bring to our relationships and it's something that we share with other people, but it is ours. And when other people try and take that away from us, they have hurt us and they are responsible for that. You know, if we are upset, if we are uncomfortable, if we've been hurt, you know, the other party is responsible. And we need to be really clear about what we like, what feels good, and what we're okay with, and then everything else outside that. It's not cool. It's not okay. And learning to set those personal boundaries is really important for us in establishing a healthy sexuality that works for us.